Hi, today is update day. Today I'm going to give you quick updates on my efforts to produce graphene, my uh, do-it-yourself sonicator and how that's working out, and also my updates on some of my easy, uh, easiest carbonization method, in particular where I am using a water-based uh, salt, a salt water solution instead of a dry salt to see how that works. Um, getting some interesting results and so let's get into it. This is an update on the uh, what I've done to the Sonicator. This is probably the last change that I'll make. The biggest change that I made here is that I went to a smaller fan. I had the fan that was the larger fan and I went to a smaller fan. The reason is I had holes drilled in the wood to allow just the, the airflow in this part of the sonicator. And I found that I was getting turbulence and buffering and, and things in this part of the fan. It really wasn't getting the flow of air that I wanted. So I went to a smaller fan, rated at the basically the same type of uh, cubic feet per minute. And it ha I have a, a big hole underneath here. I have a big hole that is just the uh, just an opening and I'm still using a push-pull configuration with two of the smaller fans and because it's a smaller fan I was able to get a shield so now there's nothing that where little fingers can get in there it's a safer unit so this is probably the last of the changes I'll make for the Sonicator for now until I actually build a, a version 1.0 I'm getting much better cooling this way but you know I'm still not getting the type of cooling that I want and so I've got more ideas, but it would require a whole new chassis, which is version 1. So I'll call this version 0 0.3, and I'm pretty happy with where it is. This is an update on my progress on making graphene with my do-it-yourself sonicator. So far, so good. It's looking pretty darn good. I took uh, 37 and a half grams of car uh, graphite, flake graphite and I combined it with 75 uh, in a uh, 500 milliliters that was a solution of 75% uh, um, acetone and 25% water and then I shook it and I uh, it was in the sonicator for three hours and I ended up with a sludge at the bottom and then I had a black liquid up at the top I poured the black liquid through a coffee filter and I ended up with this. And as you can see, it's a shiny, it's a whole different style of look. It's a shiny material, very cool shiny material. And sure enough, that if I use the ohm meter, let me get it over here, if I use the ohm meter. I'm getting a reading now of like nine ohms between the, the just 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 by just uh, sticking the probes into the into the powder there at the bottom. There's a 6.7, 6.9 ohms, um, and it's just sticking it into the the powder. So I do believe that I have graphene. I'm wondering if the graphene within this dark liquid is actually also, if th this is also graphene, I expect that it is, it's just smaller particles that went right through the uh, coffee filter. So I'm going to evaporate this and see what I get. That may be the better way of extracting the graphene from the acetone water mixture. I'm probably just going to discard this. I'll evaporate the acetone and then it's just water and graphite so it's uh, carbon, you know, it's not, not anything that is harmful. I don't have to treat it in a special way. First, I will evaporate the acetone, though, and then I can just discard it nicely. So, I, it does look like I have graphene. I don't have the funds to do a full test to confirm this. Um, I'm going to have to go on faith, but this is using the Robert Murray Smith method, and he's darned excellent, and so I'm expecting that that's, that it really is working, and I'm getting it. So, it looks like my do-it-yourself sonicator combined with the flake graphite and the acetone water mixture is working to actually produce graphene, which is really exciting. This is the experiment I've done where I mixed 
5 grams of carrot powder with 5 grams of salt water. I first take, took the salt and I mixed it with a minimum amount of water and then I mixed in 5 grams of carrot, made kind of a paste, and then I dried it. At first I dried it on paper and foil, tried those two things, and it stuck to both of those really badly. So I ended up drying it on a paper plate, I mean on a glass plate. And that way I could scrape it off with a paint scraper and everything was fine. So if your stuff is sticky, dry it on glass, and that way you can scrape it off without any contamination. So it's an interesting, flaky, uh, crusty thing. From what I understand, the carbonization is supposed to be best when the uh, sodium chloride is mixed best with the carrot powder and so I'm hoping that this will give the best results because there, I don't think you can get a better mix. I, this was from a comment on the videos that someone suggested mixing it with salt water instead of just salt and I'm liking this result so we'll see what happens when I carbonize it. Next I'll show you a couple of microscopic views. It really is wonderfully chunky and uh, just an interesting crystalline uh, type of shape where there, everything is really mixed well. Much, much better than when it was just a powder mixed with salt. This is another experiment I'm trying, very similar to the salt water with the carbon powder experiment. But in this one, I've got five grams of salt uh, mixed with water, and then I mixed in another five grams of citric acid and uh, in the water solution, and then I mixed in the powder. I'm hoping that the citric acid will act as a bit of a catalyst and be help, helpful in terms of the um, carbonization of the carrot powder as well. The interesting thing, this material, while it looks kind of similar, it's a little darker than the carrot powder and salt alone, and it also feels a little rubbery, which is just kind of fun. Uh, the real proof will be when it uh, gets carbonized. In the next couple shots here, I'll show you a couple of uh, more microscopic views. And the, the biggest thing is, is that in both of these cases, I'm getting crazy good mixture of the carrot powder with the salt. And I'm hoping that that will lead to very consistent uh, carbonization when I put it in the microwave. Finally, an update on my carbonization method. As you, if you've been following these videos, you know that I've had issues with bowls breaking and things like that due to the temperatures. So what I've settled on is actually this. It's a, just a ceramic uh, coffee mug, uh, but it is uh, wonderfully uh, resistant to the temperatures. And I got them from the dollar store for a buck. So it's nice and cheap. I put a smaller, a small um, piece of ceramic tile on top and a couple of larger ones on the bottom. And I've just put it 
directly into the microwave, figuring that I have to cool down the microwave anyway. The short period of time doesn't give enough time for the transfer of too much heat from here to the microwave um, itself. I have just gotten some um, uh, ceramic fiber blanket, one inch thick ceramic fiber uh, that I will, uh, can wrap around the mug and put underneath and on top and create an enclosed environment. I want to test that and see how much that attenuates the microwave signal but I expect that that's going to work just fine. Uh, I see that uh, Robert Murray Smith has used that successfully. And so that should be the way that I can keep the energy, the heat from escaping too much into the microwave and making it be so that I can run uh, my runs more quickly and still get an even temperature in the microwave. So just a plain ceramic cup, but it withstands the heat and works is working much better. Uh, that's my updates, and I hope this is helpful to you.